Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us at the Korea Society's Young Professionals Network series here at the Genesis House this time, where we're so lucky to be joined by Sangha Im. She's a New York-based fashion designer who was also, in her past, an entertainer and performer and a K-pop idol as well. And somehow she migrated all of those interests and abilities into her brand, Sangha, and she's going to talk about that journey with us now. Thank you so much for joining us, Sangha Im. Thank you for having me. So excited because, to me, you are OG K-pop star. In the 90s, you had that hit song, musical. It was so catchy and cheeky, and everybody loved humming it. They loved performing it in norebangs. It was just such a lovely introduction for the world to see the kind of music that was coming out of South Korea at the time. So right. thank you for sharing your time with us. Let's start off by introducing people, in case they don't know, to the fact that you started as an entertainer in the music industry and k-pop was just burgeoning at the time it was just starting to become discovered and loved can you talk a little bit about how you started in the music industry and what that lifestyle was like for you as a youngster i got to audition this children's dance and choir company and i remember vividly <laughs> um, I can't even smell it. I can't even, I can remember the smell now, that audition day that I sang uh, 고양이 봄. I'm sure everybody knows that song. 나의 살던 고양이 꽃피는 산골 And what's the smell that you remember? I'm very sensitive and um, I get reminiscent um, over any smells possible. I remember every smell. Um, I memorize all the smells, I guess. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there was, um, um, I guess there was a perfume from the pianist. And so I got in, I was selected to come to the US to perform. I was in sixth grade. So New York, Washington, LA and Hawaii for a whole month. So that was, there was an, Amazing, amazing experience. Was that not unnerving? No, I think I was very natural as far as the performing. Um, I wasn't really that outgoing kid, I remember. But when I go onto the stage, I, I just enjoyed it so much. So our first destination was New York. So I remember so well that when we all arrived in New York, we obviously performed, but we got to tour. We went all the way up to top of the uh, Empire State Building. And then I remember I was overlooking outside in the whole Manhattan city. And I think that very moment, I don't know why, um, but I think that whole manifestation started from that point. I didn't think that like, oh, I'm going to come here, but I, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to live here for, like, I did not think that. I never really thought that, not even once until I came here in 1999. But I think that epic moment, I just felt like, I remember so well that moment. Um, there was just something that I feel that I might come here again but didn't have any plan. But um, the funny thing is all my uh, peer dancers and um, they loved Los Angeles and they loved Hawaii and Waikiki and Disneyland. And um, we enjoyed performing here, but also when we got to tour all these like places, we were, um, and then for me, it was New York. When I was the first year of middle school, um, I switched to uh, modern dance because one day I saw um, a TV, this dancer barefoot in the subway in Paris. And to me, 
that's it. I'm not doing any more Korean dance. I, I need to do that. <laughs> like that's that's what I need to do. So, it was raw and yeah, real. Yeah, there was raw, the completely raw. I mean, she was just free bird. Like she was dancing. Um, her world was just like I, I was just sucked into that TV that day. So I said to my mom, I need to do that. And then that's her mission. So so she she found this um, teachers and um, best of the best. And then so <clears throat> so I uh, majored modern dance in college. And then in sophomore year, I did not want to do. Um, modern dance anymore because I wanted to do what I can do, what I do well for everyone. It was just, I loved modern dance, um, but it was too abstract. It was too, like, I wanted, like, real connection with audiences that, you know, that I have this story and then, and then they feel it, like, in, in depths of emotions. But when I was doing modern dance, would do time to time choreography, and and then it was too progressive. I mean, it was too like, you know, our movement. I don't know if they what how they understand this. You know, um, I'm sure the art form, any art forms, like audience can feel it however they like to feel it, but but I wanted like direct connection. You know, direct emotional deep connection. So I'm gonna go just pop culture. So I wanted to do musicals. I auditioned musical company uh, in my sophomore year. So I got into musical company and there was very first professional musical company in Korea. Mm -hmm. So I was the youngest. I was the only student. Um, and then they accepted me. So I did the musical. I was like in the background, like I didn't even have any line or anything like that. And then um, all my senior um, uh, musical actors and actresses, uh, they just loved me. I was very um, uh, being adored by them. And then they're like, oh, you should actually go and, you know, do TVs and, and movies and uh, you're, it's going to take forever to get a, a significant roles, or main roles. Because at the time, musical wasn't really everybody's, like, now I see it, but people, you cannot attract people to come and um, pay that ticket if there's no celebrities. So, okay, so then I'm going to go off track, but... I was so innocent. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, TV is not real. Movie and theater is only, <laughs> only The it. only real thing. Yeah, only real thing. Because so I... Then, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but then you migrated to K-pop. Yeah, migrated to K-pop because... So, so sophomore year, I was, I was luckily, I was um, pretty popular on in, in certain area. Like people knew about me, even though I wasn't really famous. I was just a musical actress and just student, being a college student. But on like in certain area in Gangnam, um, people knew about me. So, I so people were like. Um, telling me this this agent, this manager want to meet you and those type of things and street on the street. There was momentum enough that people latched onto your talent and they saw that you fit into this mode of entertainment. Y yes. So, so there were like the talent, um, obviously those ma managers and agencies and entertainment um, people, industry people, they can tell obviously they can tell this this individual not just from look you know and um so they would just find me and like how do you know that i can actually dance and sing and um and then they said that's what i do was that intimidating to no, be it thrust into an industry that was just starting to become a real economic powerhouse mm -hmm. right i mean it it was not necessary. I don't know, because I was full of, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't really intimidating. I actually told them that that's not for me. It's actually not for me. And in the beginning also, and then my father was very, 
very conservative person. Mm -hmm. Even um, his friends would say, like, I don't even know how you became that, you know, like with a father like your father. Mm -hmm. um, so he's very conservative and he, so I, me and my mom like, oh, okay, so um, musical, being musical theater during my uh, college years, it was already like, where like always, my mom was always nervous. Like if my dad finds out that's gonna be a big deal. In, and, and then eventually my brother actually, the one who convinced my dad. So was fame something that you sought? Did you want to make it really badly? Uh, no, but I wanted to get the role that I wanted to get in musical theater. I can't, I, I don't want to just dance like entire career in, because, because I was a dancer, I, I, I major modern dance, um, and then I sang, I, I wanted to sing too. So, um, actually back in the middle school time, my mom said, do you want to sing and do you want to dance? I said, I actually, I want to sing. So I started singing a lesson. I started a singing lesson and this teacher i had private lesson in my house and then he was like do you know all this like um the practice you need to know how to use the core and then he he was like doing that and i was no i don't want to do that so i back to dance and then i studied the modern dance and um i thought that i can do better than just dancing in the background and i was i was literally two hours musical i i was every single scene because I was a pretty good dancer, and then they just put me every single scene in the back, and I'm not like, you know, I need, I want, I want to actually do that too, and I thought that I can do that at well, and and all my, um, um, I was like 20, 21 years old, and and all other um, uh, actors, they were like. 27 and early 30s and then they're like oh you should you know you should not really do this just go and do other things and then back and get the the real you know um so i i think i had that desire but um in the beginning i just didn't feel like okay this is i was contemplating i was not sure that if i really want to just because I need fame, like, do I really want to go on TV, you know? And then there's all the managers and, you know, chasing after me and like, let me see, <laughs> let me rethink. <laughs> this is, I don't, like, like as much as I want that, I had different purpose, but at the same time, like, oh, I don't think that I belong there. But I can't help but wonder when musical, the song, the hit song, because I still hear it yeah, yeah. every once in a while. If I'm shopping in a Korean supermarket, I will hear it come on. And it brings me back to the late 90s, early 2000s, when everybody was, they were into that song. So when it became a big hit, like how did that make you yeah, feel? Yeah, so, so, so I decided to go with a manager and actually the, the, um, uh, the music producer. So, so when I signed with him, I became, um, immediately morning show host, um, the weekend morning show host, but at the same time, we were immediately preparing the first album. So that was, Musical was the first album song. Mm -hmm. And then, it wasn't really the title song, but um, I told him that I need to put two things. One is the song, when you hear it, when you listen to that song, it's like, this is music, this is about musical. And then that, I need a song like musical, musical song. And then the, the other one is my favorite song that I want to remake, which was, it's called Nae and Nariyagi. It's, I, I love that song. It was my, um, I was a uh, first year of, of middle school. And I love that song so much that I wanted to remake that. So those two things I have to put in my album. So, so that was musical. That's how the musical came out. Actually that song, we, um, we didn't even spend a lot of time. Um, I can't believe that because yeah. when you, if you look online and you look up your live performances of that song, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the energy that you put forward, the happiness that's just pouring out of you as you pr dance and sing that song is very evident. <laughs> no yeah. one can doubt that you're having fun with that. Yeah, but, I, I loved it. And so did, was it mind blowing when it was as successful as it was? Well, um, we certainly didn't think that that's the song that's going to really, you know, hit um, other songs, but um, but it did because also the lyric was perfect. And and my um, persona at that time, I 
immediately um, became a morning show host, and then I became actress in, in drama. So I did the K-drama. Now I say K-drama, it's a little weird, but um, so uh, it's, yeah, K-drama, I um, got picked for this like very serious main character immediately. Oh my goodness, so, you did not have enough to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I did that first before we launched the al first album. So I was doing this like three camera things and it's very different from theater, mm. the, the drama acting. Very, very different. The whole vibe is different. There's no audience. And then they're just like, and even the script, it would just print out as we go because the writer sometimes had to change. They literally just stand there in, in front of the fax machine and then receive it here. I'm hearing from you the, the genesis in a lot of ways of how K-pop cultural products like dramas and movies have oh, become yeah. so popular now because there is that sense of, oh my goodness, did that just happen? And where is the story going? And I, I want more Very and more agile. and more. And so yeah. you, were, you were behind the scenes seeing all of that come together. You were also manifesting it, performing right, it. Right. So let me ask you this. Do you still feel a connection to that person? Because I, I, I want to talk about your brand, Sanga. Mm -hmm. But I want to know like, how much of that experience as someone who was in the spotlight, in entertainment, helped to inform why you made the transition that you did. So one, do you still feel a connection to that person who was entertaining and bringing so much joy to people? Oh, absolutely. That's, um, there's a lot of layers in the different forms that I can talk about, but the one thing is that once you become um, a, some effective celebrity, it, that stays, that, that's literally in your tail, the tag in your tail. It follows, it follows everywhere, everywhere. And even though after I moved here, um, long later, um, it just, it just there. Like I'm, like I'm not even. There are some years that I wasn't on TV at all in Korea for a while, and I will find this vlogger uploaded a picture of me and my daughter mm. on a street, uh, and I'm like. You know, they're interested in taking a picture of me and my daughter and putting it on, on your vlog, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, the musical had a lot to do with it, I think. There's the song musical, because mm -hmm. people constantly singing it. And um, the singers, the, the, um, the young singers that would, in competition um, program, they would sing the song. And, and because it's very uplifting, very cheering, and... Um, so it's so you're reminded you're reminded yeah i, I get very constantly frequently. reminded because yeah. because of that song also i feel so so happy and and flattered that people love the song that people still sing the song and then most importantly that makes them feel happy right that moment at least that when they sing that song they get uplifted they get happier and i mean that's the whole thing about me that was my vision ever since i was 14 years old so when I was 14 years old, I was so into movies. The filmmaker was my OG dream. <laughs> I, was, I loved film scores, soundtrack, all the music really made me get into these old, old movies, like really old, like Papillon and, you know, those movies I was really into, or black and white movies. And so, I remember one time I walked, I used to just go to the movie theater by myself because my, my friends at the time, I mean, they're not really like into going to movies at movie theater for Charlie Chaplin and, you know, what's Charlie Chaplin? Like, you know, they're like, they would just fall asleep if I take them um, to the theater. So I would go alone and then I sit there and then I, one time I walked, I, the, the credits, um, a closing credit will come down and then I'll, and I turn around and I feel like, ooh, I love this feeling. You know, I'm going to, I can't wait to go to school tomorrow. And like, and then I, I can't wait to like chat with my friends. And then I feel so great. Like, like this feeling is just so amazing. And then that moment I thought, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do something that I can do well to make other people feel this way. It doesn't matter if it's just the one that moment in that very moment or later or like it doesn't matter like this is what i'm gonna do so 
I knew that I can dance well, I can sing well, and then I can perform. And, and then that's, that has always been my vision. And um, so musical, I did it already. So I feel like, you know what? I actually, my vision that, is, that I had since I was 14 been kind of achieved. And um, that's and you what I say to, to people. Change. Yeah, you needed to challenge yourself in a different way. Is that why you ultimately decided to come to New York? Like, what was it that brought you oh, here? Oh, actually, that was um, yeah, that's what I was getting into. So, so I think my my I don't know my personality or um, it was it wasn't really easy for me that um, uh, while I was there. Um, doing TV work and um, singing in front of camera and um, acting in front of camera, not audience, the real audience that I thought I would do something when I switched to uh, theater acting from uh, from dance, modern dance. I thought I would. I just I just want to do something for everyone who can really relate what I do, and then they can feel good, just like how I felt when I was leaving the theater. At, when I was 14 years old, to like people who sell fish on the street or like million billionaire or whoever that is, just can have that feeling. And then, and then I, I was on TV, like it was just really confusing time. And um, there's no audience and the camera, they always change things and then they go, it was, it was obviously just show business, it was entertainment business. It's a, there's a, a lot, now I know that it was a big business side of it was attacking me that I wasn't really expecting. And then now I do business, so I know what was going on. Um, I wasn't really take anything into consideration that part of entertainment. So I was just fully focused on, um, so there was, it was a hard time that I felt, um, okay, so I am going, um, I'm going to go to New York or London to study musical. And um, I mean, think about it. I was, I was, I was majoring in modern dance, but I, and then particularly Alvin Ailey technique, but I never really seen Alvin Ailey performing in front of me. Like I never really seen that in person. I only saw on v VHS videotape and my professor said like, you know, oh, in New York when I was learning this, you know, well, I was fascinated. Like, I, and then at the same time, like, I want to go see the two. And I was doing musical, Guys and Dolls, and, but I never seen Broadway musical in person. So like, okay, I wanted to gauge myself, like how well I'm doing actually, you know, I, I, I'm pretty good now here, but if I actually really go there, if I see the Avenelli dancers, like, where am I? Like, where, where, where do I stand? So you came. So I came. You came to the source. But for work, though, for two weeks. Okay. Yeah, and then I came here, and then, um, and then I, was, I was kind of planning, like, some point I wanted to take a chance to go and do what I always um, um, hungry to do, uh, to learn and see experience in New York. So it was t kind of not exactly like, exactly when, but I had that kind of plan like some point. And then I happened to come here for, uh, for work. And then I'm like, okay, so if I, um, I had that plan, but maybe this is a time. So I should not go back. And if I actually go back and pack and cut, like, I don't think that's going to happen at that time. I just, so I just knew it. Stay. I decided to stay and then I stayed and then uh, for a year or two and um, so I, I went right to NYU to, to study film and then, and then English, I had to learn English. So English and, um, and the musical, um, uh, uh, theater dancing and singing. And then I did all of that. And then while I was doing that, I got, um, I met and married. And so I wanted to life happened. Yeah. Life happened. And then. And then before I got married, actually, um, while I was learning what I wanted to learn here and experience, I feel like, oh, you know what? This New York, whatever this New York City has to offer me, I think I, I, there are a lot of things that I'm, talent, I'm, I'm, I'm good at. 
<laughs> so, like, okay, fashion is this a capital city of fashion? Okay, it's the fashion I can do. Um, okay, and then like, there's wash. Mm, I think I can do that too. And then like, oh, the sh chef. I I grew up cooking all the time um, with my mom, so I think I can be chef too. So let me try one thing. <laughs> so it sounds like you. I mean, you had so many interests, and you are in a city where so many of those interests exactly. have reached mm. the pinnacle of excellence and talent. Um, and ability, and so it, it, at what point did you decide, all right, let's just try out fashion? Like, how did you, how did you take that bend in the road? I tried, uh, uh, I, I first tried to be a chef. So I decided, I was actually two things I wanted to try, fashion and um, be a chef, because I, when I came here, I did part-time job at a restaurant, amazing chef uh, restaurant, and and then I got to see the 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 kitchen. And then when I, I was standing there looking at the kitchen, I was fascinated. I not just fascinated. I was like, I want to be there. I want to be in there. I want. It, I mean, it's military, as <laughs> as everybody knows. And then the sous chef was literally harnessing the whole kitchen, and oh my god, I need to do that. So. I said, fashion, okay, put aside fashion for a second. So I, I signed up for um, uh, culinary school. So I started it, and in three months, I dropped out. And first of all, English was just really hard. The whole vocabulary for cooking is whole new language. It's another world. It's completely. And, and, um, and then it was a very professional program that I signed to. So they pair with somebody mm -hmm. and then you have to like within an hour you t you need to make this dish and that dish and then i mean it's just it's 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 a, it's a war it's very demanding yeah and then I, I and i feel bad for my you know whoever i got paired with because everything is like you know the grading system head to toe what you wear even apron every, how you put apron, and everything was just really intense and then i i, I just on my way home, I always cried and like, oh, this mm. is this is this is not just me, you know. I don't think that I'm, I should be there, you know. I can't even understand the recipe that easily, and uh, that's not. So the right. glamour of that kind of faded away a little bit. But I loved it though. I brought a lot of food. And well, it sounds <laughs> like you may have learned a lot from oh, that experience. A lot, a lot. And then after that, obviously, um, I mean the. Everything, I'm a huge believer um, in connecting dots. So whatever I did, I was fortunate to have all the experience growing up um, because I have this desire, this level of desire that I was born with, um, self-actualization, if you will, then, um, and also very supportive parents, especially my mom always convince my dad and then <laughs> she would run it like I want that I need that then like she would like okay so she's in mission and find the best of the best um, for learning so everything was just not I mean it was it was there to help me so so fashion so after that I moved on to fashion if, when you do fashion like presentation is very important presentation skill you're a designer you need to present that. Um, so how did you start teaching yourself? Because I understand you spent some time watching, not quite interning, but you did seek out the experts. You spent some time with a high fashion stylist. Um, and I think that was at Vogue, right? No, it was, I was in Parsons. Oh, that was at Parsons. Yeah, and then so I got the um, internship okay. and, in Donna Karen. And, um, and then she said, so what do you, she was actually, she was nice. She was caring enough to, what, what do you ultimately want to do? I said, um, stylist. I thought that I'll be a stylist at first. Um, so she said, okay, then I actually have amazing, uh, amazing, amazing stylist. And then she was the most um, is top tier, high profile stylist, actually. So she sent me to her, interning um, uh, at her studio. And then and basically all I did was, my body size, duffel bag, carrying around the whole city. So working with a fashion stylist, 
basically as an intern, like following them around and seeing what it is they do to actually put fashion out there in front of the public. What was that like for you? She has studio in sixth floor walk-up building, penthouse. So I would carry literally my, my size of duffel bags walking up and down the sixth floor building to her penthouse studio, um, encountering dead mouse all the time. All the dead time mice? on the stairs. Dead mice oh. and rats, like big rats on the stairs. Um, and then all over the city. <laughs> and um, sometimes there's a budget for car, and then some, a lot of times no car. So I would take subways. And, um, but the great thing is that she's such a high profile stylist, even intern. And sometimes I uh, act as an assistant as well. So I would um, be treated really well. <laughs> Even with the garment bag, even with the duffel bag, and then they were like, oh, please come in and check out all our new collection. And like, okay, I'll make a note. <laughs> but The um, movie, uh, like a scene from The Devil Wears Prada is exactly. coming, coming to oh, mind oh, right absolutely. now. Absolutely. It was kind of like that? Oh, kind of like that. And I got yelled all the time mm -hmm. because my English was not that great. And if she said too fast, I would never get it. I would never get it. She would yell at me like, this is not what I'm yelling, like crazy yelling. And then I'm like, you know what? This is like a daydreaming for me. I grew up in the 80s, you know? We get yelled all the time from parents and teachers and we get like punished, like push up. I mean, hardcore. So I was okay. But my, um, the other uh, uh, person, assistant above me at the studio said to me, like the longest intern would stay here uh, two weeks. <laughs> I was there for seven months, so I did pretty good. So what would you say was the best lesson that you took away? And so, how did that help you to start your own brand and so to really was, seriously design? Network was definitely a big one. And then I get to see the whole production of, of the editorial photo shoots and like the most high profile photographer, how did they do and how to organize, what's the process and like each photographer, each stylist and, and whoever involves in the production, it was fascinating. After that, I became an assistant uh, to other stylists. So I was like a real assistant, not intern. Uh, for a year, and then when I started my own brand, I called her up. I had like, you know, I was like, I I just launched my handbag line, by the way, and that the most scary to every. She, I mean, she was known for that. My stylist was known for really scary. <laughs> she actually um, launched her own brand too, underwear and athleisure clothing line. So, so we were like, like we were both designers. And, but anyway, so I called her up and she said, even though she was very hardcore, she was very soft and she was like, she, that, I knew that kind of personality, I, I did. So, so she was like, okay, all right, with very thick English accent, very thick, extremely thick. Um, I didn't really understand what she was saying in the beginning at all. So uh, she said, okay, so what do you need? And um, she literally held my hand and taken me to the most, uh, one of the most high profile showroom. So I ended up signing with that showroom. So she did a big part of uh, my beginning journey, um, contribute, yeah, big support. Let me backtrack you just a little bit because I feel like many people in our audience listening to this story of you following a high profile stylist and learning from the ground up how to launch. Can you offer some lessons that you learned in how to go from just merely learning to executing a vision that you had? Because you started with handbags, but you've now migrated to jewelry. I'm, I'm wondering if you can talk about that, that gray space where 
so many people are too scared to actually make their dream come true. But at some point, you had this idea that you were going to build a brand. It was going to look a certain way. It was going to make people feel a certain way. How did you get lift on that airplane as you're trying to like build it on the runway as it's going? Like, How did you make that happen? I think the most important, if you have that in tr your um, DNA, if you have the trait, that's amazing. But if you don't, I think the most important uh, quality is resilience. So you just be resilient and, and just, I mean, right now also the, the success formula, the winning formula is very different and, and evolved by high technology. From that time that I, I started, it was 2000, uh, I launched my line 2006. So we basically then we're talking about no Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, social media was just starting to just starting gain and, traction. Exactly. So, YouTube was starting, just starting to get popular enough that people realized, oh, this is another source. It's not just my television set anymore. So the, it, it has been, um, the whole landscape has been evolved and changed and then it's changing every moment, rapidly changing. But I think the principle of, of um, the, the principles are the same, the timeless principle, like you have to be open-minded open -minded and um, resilient. You have to be resilient. I think resilience is just, I cannot, um, and the clear vision, obviously. You have to have the clarity. You have to, I, I think it's clear, more the clear vision you have, more the chance. And the short-term goal, short goals. Uh, people I talk about dream all the time, but I always feel like dream is a little too abstract for me. You know, and then goal, yes, of course, you wanna have a three, five, 10, years, um, always what worked for me was a short term goal. So you can actually achieve. Can you give an it's, example? It's attainable. Um, anything that you have, obviously you have to have a very clear vision. The clarity is very important. But after then, it's really getting things done. Um, because this creative work is always very um, intangible in a way. You know, like, how can you create, how can you like design this in like, so by certain deadline? I create one thing, check. Tomorrow, another, I mean, it doesn't come that way, right? So you just have to have that discipline, that daily goal, weekly goal, monthly goal, and then that short-term goal is what really makes your actual vision 10 years later, two years later, 20 years later, or a dream, if you will. So obviously you had the discipline to carry it through. Were there any particular obstacles or challenges that seemed very difficult for you? And can you name some of those? Because I think for people who are listening to your story, they want to know, um, they want to know the real tangible lesson that they could maybe apply to their own lives without having your talent, maybe, or the drive that you did. Is there, was there a particular commitment or challenge that you found difficult to overcome, and how did you overcome it? Especially since you went from an industry where you're being managed to now managing your own business. Well, I have to say there's no magic. The, um, you just have to do it, and over and over and over again. I think that's, that's, there's a no, uh, there's no trick, there's no magic. Uh, people ask like, how did you, you just do it. You just have to do it. Like, how do you wake up like five in the morning every day and go to the gym and how you love bread and, and duck and rice and what, <laughs> how can you stay skinny? Like, okay, just stop asking me because I work out to death. Like you just, there's no way to do it. You just got to do it. So that's why I think that, um, and then, and then you feel like, oh, wow, this actually happened overnight. But you think twice about it, and it really didn't happen overnight. It just didn't. You know, like, and also, for instance, if I give you an example, I was talking about working in front of cameras. 
from um, uh, transitioning into camera from uh, stage, right? And then, and then you were actually surprised, like, I just got a main role, a main character role in drama um, uh, when I started a TV uh, work. But nothing comes to free. Like, it seems like, oh, she just, she just like got picked as a main character. She doesn't have, she'd never done like acting, TV acting before, and she never really done any drama before. And then she was like, boom, main character. But there's always what it comes after. I had to work 10 times more. And because I didn't, I don't know what to, the camera wanted, which camera I have to look. And when we do outdoor uh, filming, like there's also, there's a skill that you need to, you need to know. And then there's, there's a drill that you need to know. Like even like the um, soft skills, like you have to know how to mingle with, how to like, you know, mingle with those staffs and, you know, like all those things that you have to learn. I mean, it doesn't come quick enough, but I didn't know any of those. And then I, voila, you're like main character. Were so, there any skills that you felt you were missing that you had to learn on your own? Oh, like you just you just mentioned soft skills. So yeah, soft skills because there's a vibe there. The Korea, the culture, is very distinct, distinguished. I have to say, so they have their own color still. The Korean people have the culture. I mean, I think it's not a bad thing. There's a pros pros and cons, but so when I got into the whole the TV crew and working with the TV crew, like director, producer, and actors, they have their own culture going on. And then like the in-between, I was, before we started the interview, I, I was talking about like, I, I'm very um, sensitive and then I try to enjoy the between things, between the events, between milestones, between our events, like, you know, the things actually today, I, I talked to you, I, we're interviewing now, but before we get into, this actual interview, the conversation I had with you, I think that was that. That's I, I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna cherish that very much <laughs> later on. So that those things and and then that that really makes it. Um, um, that's the real quality. That's real value. And and I, I think Korean culture has very significantly that. Like Korean culture is that. So, like actual work results and all good, but you need to know how to be part of the whole group of people in community to do the work. And I had to learn all of that and a little different uh, also culture from theater people. So I had to learn all of that, but people who work there up to that point, they all experienced like, oh, 10 years, I just hit the rock bottom, like for 10 years, I was nobody. And finally I made it, it took 10 years, which means they already had it all. They learned everything. And I didn't know anything. Like I was like punished all the time by, by director. And then like really directly, you know, the Korean style, very directly like, ah, oh, you, you shouldn't do that. You don't know that, like, go and learn it. And like, and I'm like, Okay, it comes as a homework anyways. It's not overnight. Nothing is overnight to answer your question back. I think, you know, you just have to do it. I love that phrase, like, just do it. It's Nike. I think a do it again is more important part. <laughs> just listening to you talk about, though, like understanding culture, being able to read people mm -hmm. and it, not insert yourself forcefully, but be able to navigate, be part of the that in-between moment that mm -hmm, you were talking mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. it's, it strikes me that maybe that happens a certain way in Korean culture. Mm -hmm. It definitely happens a certain way in New York culture. Mm -hmm. um, what I found in New York is that the more touchable you are, the mm -hmm. more real you are, the more mm -hmm. people appreciate you mm -hmm. here, no matter what industry you're working mm -hmm. in. Um, I want to know, like when you launched your brand, mm -hmm. Because I want to talk about the brand. I want to talk about the look <laughs> and what inspired you. Mm -hmm. I want to know what was it about your time here in New York that gave you inspiration for how your brand looks and feels. I think it was just me. It was it was just me that I what what I want to have. I was always a fashion person since I was, I think it was seventh grade. Um, I was in seventh grade, and I was living in 
this new development area is called Pampodong. And um, we we're very first kind of like new development area. We just we were just first um, group of people who moved into that area. So there's there's a like new um, new shopping malls and new this and new that. And then one area was they sell the manufacturing. The Korea was huge manufacturing. We manufactured you name it, Ralph Lauren and Donna Karen. We manufacture all. So there was like the clothing that it was not perfected. They just had this like huge pile of clothing that you can go in and then just one dollar, uh, 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 three shirts, one dollar. I was, I was, I was like always living in there, and then grab. I had eyes that I know exactly what I wanted. I can just chew three pieces and pay one dollar, because my mom would uh, would shop something and then I said I ditched it all, and then my mom was so upset one day. Like, okay, you take care of it. So ever since that, I shopped myself. So fashion was always, so I, what I want, even in New York City, like even though I just came to New York and I don't really, you know, know much about America and New York fashion, but what I would wear and what I want wear that I couldn't find is, is always the inspiration. And then that was my market and there was my audience. I'm gonna zero in on the stuff that I love mm -hmm. that you've made. Mm -hmm. The glasses that you're wearing, uh -huh. the chair earring, right. um, the handbags that kind of sit on your butt right, right. and flatter your butt, mm -hmm. but they're also very sleek mm -hmm. and there's nothing like extra. There's mm -hmm. nothing too frilly about it. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is something the consumer wants? Um, because I think the woman that I design for is is me, so I know that those are not out there in the market that I can easily find, and um, that's how I started. Handbag's the same, and uh, handbag was a little different because I started with exotic skin, and you know, not necessarily I was really into exotic, but uh, exotic skins. But I saw it and I fell in love, and then I ended up really doing it. Um, I loved it, but but um, but jewelry, I just needed it. I just needed it for myself. And then, um, oh, that's my, um, yeah, <laughs> that's your mic. Is, yeah, <laughs> I needed it. I wanted like jewelry like this so that I can just slip on, and you know, it's like a mundane, like a daily jewelry item. And and I'm not like, you know, like a woman who can wake up and then like oh, open up the jewelry box and put it on, and then like before you go to bed, like oh, clean up and then take it all out and put it in jewelry. I'm just not that person. So you just want to be able to slip it off. Yes. Make it nice and simple. Elegant. Yeah, and then I, I can even sleep with it. And then these are actually I sleep with it. But Rihanna, Beyonce, mm -hmm. Anne Hathaway, these uh -huh. are some of the clients who have purchased your exactly. your designs. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, are they your target audience, or is no, it the people it was who just, love them? I think of what happened is I was very naturally uh, designing something that's innovative. Um, what it is, it's not out there. You know, this is beautiful handbags but but it wasn't out there so the uh the stores who pick my brand because they think that oh this is actually very usually structured in this leather and this uh, uh made it that way uh this is different this look different it feels different um so they have the clients like rihanna they have clients like beyonce and then they come in and oh that looks different and then they pick it for getting the celebrity um, dressing like that, and then it was very natural. So, so who is your target audience? My target audience is, I think, at this point, I have to say, the community is the inspiration for me. So, the um, community that you live in, yeah, community that uh, it authentically uh, created. So, I have this community who follows a brand and. And they, we do a lot of communications. We uh, you have a YouTube channel, yeah, YouTube channel. Also, I have uh, launched about three years ago already. Wow, that's crazy. So, when you say community, are these your customers, followers? There are uh, followers, customers, everything. And what, what are they giving you? Like, what do they give you as a designer that inspires you to keep on? Oh, oh, they're giving me your so output. much. I love them so much. <laughs> um, uh, I don't really say love, but this is actually, this means a lot because I, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, they give so much. They they know so much now about Senga brand. And we have such nice, intimate, authentic 
um, uh, uh, story sharing, uh, a nice space. Uh, it got built at uh, YouTube through social media through because this high, high technology really enable this type of uh, space to grow. So um, there's a pros and cons. This is a big pros. So we got to have this, you know, amazing community members, and they knew so much. They they're the one tell me hmm. that I want that, I want this, and and then you are that. So it would be great for us to have this, and they're the one who actually tell me, and what they want, and that's the inspiration. I love the way you talk about how tech. You mentioned this earlier, how tech has really changed, how fashion gets disseminated and shared and developed. Um, it's funny because my next question is about what your uh, what your interests are in terms of your influences. Like, I understand that you've looked at other European cultures to see like what kinds of designs might you might be interested or able to to design for them. When I did some research on that, I found that there was like a degree on digital communications fashion. It was like focused in on how the tech world today and digital communication has actually changed fashion that way. Is this is this part and parcel of your strategy? Like, have you looked towards um, other cultures for influence? And do you feel that technology is is one of your ways of doing that? There's not a way of doing it. It's part of it. It's it's uh, it's an ingredient of whatever you do now. It, it, that's how I put it. It's just, that's it. Like it's not, it's like when we start having this all digital uh, sources for marketing, we say, like, oh, digital marketing. No, no, it's not a digital marketing, it's marketing. Mm. So it's the same thing, the technology is like, oh, we're, we're doing this digital technology. Uh, it's not it, it's just part of it. Um, so actually this is our next venture that we're working on right now. It's called Senga Store Media. So it is a virtual uh, community playground with um, the cutting edge marketplace. So we're building. Um, so this is this is our new venture. This is this is our very exciting uh, project. Not project. It's it's our, basically it's, it's my new vision. <laughs> so we're working on. Um, um, it is it is a virtual a virtual community space, a playground. We just hang out there, and then it's heavily. Uh, uh, rely on technology, the new software that we're building. And so, so we're gonna have all contents in it. So we're gonna just have fun virtually on this under the same roof. We're gonna have like video, our our Senga channel, watch Senga channel, and then we're gonna have podcasts. We're gonna have live commerce at the same time, all together in like very immersive um, experience. So. So that's you would call it. It's a it's digital, but it's it, it's like I would say it's it's just space. It's just it's just space for our community. Another space. And, yeah, another space for our community, and I'm very excited about it. Um, yeah, we just we're just um, raising a C funding round, and and um, we're having very good feedback and having good conversations, and so yeah, technology is is very uh, very. It's it's not a topic. It's 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 the the life that we live in now. So you may as well just um, get on it. And I think so. That's the really important. Uh, the young professionals, a very very important skill, and um, is that agility that you have to be agile, like quickly adapt and adjust, and then be able to enjoy it like a dancer. My final question. Um, is about how you are a kind of bridge between two cultures. So the Korea Society is infinitely interested in building stronger relationships um, and relations between the US and uh, South Korea. And obviously, your life is in America. Your brand is loved by both sides of the world. Um, how do you feel you have provided that connection? Like, what is that your impact? As a designer, did it start off that way? I do think that uh, we are in New York City, and it's the most diverse um, city that you get to encounter every single, like every culture possible um, on a daily basis. So. My experience 
when I work with or when I encounter, when I make new friends in different countries, that's, that's the, the perception of that country to me. So I become a designer here and I um, become a member of this, this American uh, Designer Council organization and all it's called CF uh, Council Fashion Design of, of America. That's actually a big milestone moment that I feel it like. It is. Yeah, to be a like, member is no small feat. Yes. Yeah, so I felt like when I got a call, like, I feel like, oh, wow, I'm a designer now. I am. I really am a designer. Um, that was a really big moment for me. But, like, but they know that my background because the, um, the New York uh, fashion, and I think globally also, they all, they, they're very interested in knowing the story behind it. Um, so it's very obvious, um, and and then just me doing what I love doing here, and um, that's that's what I, I think that's very um, impactful um, to, if you will, you know, like what I am contributing here as a Korean and and also in New York City. It's such New York City um, in America. Well, I wish you continued success. Thank you. And I love the fact that you really believe that you just doing you is the best path to success. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you so much for sharing so much of your story Absolutely. with thank the you. Korea Society and for the Young Professionals Network. Thank you so much for thank having you. me. Thanks, And Hannah. thank you for um, being here for me too. I'm, <laughs> I'm so honored. <laughs> it was fun. Thank you.